All right, Adam, I, I really appreciate you being here with me on the Social Entrepreneurship and Innovation Podcast. And for folks who are unfamiliar, would you mind introducing yourself and, and sharing with us a little bit as to what it is that you do? Sure, yeah. My name is Adam Kuhns. I'm the founder of Have Fun, Do Good. Uh, we, we like to define ourselves as a, a social good travel company. Uh, we provide group travel experiences that incorporate volunteerism. Excellent. And uh, from, from what I understand with the due diligence I, I did before our chat, uh, this was all incepted really with a, an RV trip across the country with one of your good buddies. Is that right? Yeah, I, uh, I was working for the, my first job out of college. I was working for the man doing the nine to five grind. Mm -hmm. I hated it. <laughs> um, came back to my apartment one day and said to my, to my roommate, uh, hey, what do you, what do you, how do you feel about taking an RV across the, across the country and doing some volunteer work? Uh, we, we had a handshake packed right there that we were going to do it no matter what. And uh, the, the rest is history. We took an RV from New York City to San Diego, did some volunteer work. And uh, yeah, it really instilled this passion for traveling and volunteering. Mm. What was, what was the RV like? Cause I, I heard you, you raised something like 13,000 and spent that on the trip and the RV or maybe I'm yeah. kind of the RV. Um, she was, she, she, <laughs> be, uh, she, she was a, who year was it? It was 19, the 1996 uh, Winnebago. Mm. And uh, yeah, we paid 6,500 bucks for it and it got us across the country multiple times wasn't very nice inside, but uh, we made it work. But uh, she ran, she ran, she ran really well. Man, that's that's pretty incredible. So, what what were the stops like? Like, how did you decide on where to go, at what points, and what kind of work to do? Sure. Yeah. I mean, we were really just running and gunning most of the time. Um, my friend Andrew and I, who who took, uh, he was the RV, the other RVer with me. Um, we met in New Orleans uh, doing a volunteer trip post Katrina. So we felt like that was important to go back to where we met and, and form that friendship. Uh, so uh, we worked with Catholic Charities down in, in New Orleans. And then the rest of the opportunities we just found online and, and wanted to have a, a good mix of uh, working with different organizations. So that was, there wasn't too much thought process put into it other than we just knew we wanted to work in, uh, with Catholic Charities again in, in New Orleans. Hmm. And what was there anything, I mean, I'm, I'm sure there was a whole kind of, breadth of things, but, but what sort of exact takeaways or maybe surprises do you, do you feel like you took with you uh, from that trip? Yeah, I think the whole trip was, was kind of surprised. I mean, we, we did the best that we could planning it. Uh, but as you know, with, with traveling, there are always unexpected things that come along, and that's what makes traveling such a beautiful thing. Um, I think for me personally, I I really stepped out of my, my shell on that trip. It was, it was this moment of, I think it was 23 years old and I just realized, Hey, I, I can do anything that I, I put my mind to, you know, we came up with this idea on a whim, we raised money for it. Uh, so it was this very introspective experience for me where I, I just thought, Hey, you know, I, I can do this thing and I, I could, I could start a business and a nonprofit. And uh, yeah, I came out of that trip with a lot of confidence. Hmm. And, and so I understand that that came into, or it turned into a, a documentary, short documentary, right? Uh, that you're showing in, in colleges, schools and stuff around the country. Was that like, at what point did, or was there the inflection point that you thought this, this is exactly uh, something that could be a business uh, for us? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so when we did the, the initial trip, we didn't have any plans after that. We brought two cameras uh, we knew we were going to film it. We didn't know we were going to do with that film. We pieced together a 40 minute documentary and, and to call it a documentary, I could, I could send you a link to, I think the original <laughs> one is still out there online somewhere. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't know what we wanted to do with it. We started showing it at, at colleges, churches, anywhere that would allow us to show this thing. And then students would come up to us afterwards and say, Hey, how do I, how do I sign up for the next one? I think that's where we had the light bulb moment of, hey, you know, maybe we're onto something. Maybe we could do something with this more than than we initially thought. So having people, um, yeah, express interest in something we didn't even know was really a thing at that point. That was that was probably the inflection point for us. Mm. And do you, do you remember like showing it for the first time? Were you feeling proud, or were you kind of like nervous or anxious? Or we were super proud of it. You know, it was <laughs> like looking back, it would it. 
at it. It was way too long. I, mean, I think it was 45 <laughs> minutes. And uh, I'm not a video editor by trade, so I didn't know what I was doing. We put some cool music to it. And uh, yeah, we were extremely proud to, to show it to people. And we worked on, on the concept for a year. So I, I think there was some nervous energy and how are people going to react to this. But uh, the first couple showings were all friends and family. So we felt like we were in a, in a safe space. Mm. And then, uh, so the trajectory of that point, uh, getting some reflections from students or whomever who, who uh, was attending the showings to having like a first official have fun, do good trip. Like, what was that kind of timeline like and how did those things come together? Yeah, so, so we need to take a step back there a little bit just because I ran that. So we ended up getting our 501c3 status, uh, turned that into a full-on nonprofit and ran it for three and a half years. So we did three more RV trips. And then Andrew and I just decided to go our separate ways. We, we weren't making any money with it. Mm. Um, so we, we um, yeah, we went our separate ways. And I had, I'd started a, I was working all the while on, on a business I started in college, digitizing outdated media. So I went all in on, on that business, just knowing that I needed to make some money um, you know, when we started, it was called the call to serve the nonprofit. Mm. We were just really naive. We didn't know what we were doing. We were running strictly on, on passion and, uh, yeah, had, had to pay the bills. So, uh, I always knew that I would come back to traveling and volunteering. And that's really was the impetus of, of have fun, do good. I, I sold the company I, I just mentioned, uh, in 2015, did a very similar road trip with a friend of mine that I met, uh, on the call to serve trip. And uh, that's, that's how we started Have Fun Do Good. It was born out of that, this weekend warrior trip, we called it, and uh, did a couple of volunteer projects along the way. And I, I felt like right at home, you know, eight years had passed since we dissolved the, the nonprofit, but I felt like, hey, this is, uh, I could do this again. And, I, and I'm smarter now. I, I ran a successful for-profit company, and I think I could take some of what I learned and, and, and apply it to this travel volunteering space. Mm. And then, so uh, I'm interested in that particularly, like this, some of what you learned blending both those experiences, nonprofit, you know, and really just kind of burning yourself out in some degree, you know, doing it for more out of just complete passion. Uh, and then the, the successful for-profit venture, what, what did you start to blend together? Or what were some of those realizations that you had? And you're like, okay, I can take this uh, to this previous thing that I really enjoyed and thought was very enriching and valuable for myself and others. Sure. Yeah. I, I, so I think with, when we were running the, the call to serve, I didn't have that business fortitude that I, I formed when I started my, my for-profit. Um, nonprofits are, are a little tricky. I just felt like we were spending most of our time trying to raise money, mm -hmm. but not thinking about creating a, a revenue generating successful, profitable company. Um, and that's where I think the, the passion of it kind of blurred the lines between, okay, we need, we need to be a profitable company first. Mm. Uh, so moving into a, a for-profit company, um, focusing on, on margins, managing employees, and, and again, really, really building out a, a successful, profitable company, and then applying those same tactics to the volunteer travel space. I mean, just to give you an example, when we started the call to serve, we were running um, three and a half week trips. It was way too long. You know, mm. like we, we weren't thinking about it. It was just, we thought, Hey, we took a three and a half week trip. It was awesome. Let's try to sell this to other people. Um, but, but relying more on the donations to, to fund the business than anything else. So, uh, I was able to take that information. It was a great learning experience and then apply, apply it to have fun, do good. Mm. And so the, this first official trip for have fun, do good. Uh, what was, what was that one like? And what did that feel like for you to kind of come full circle to it in a different sort of manifestation of it? Sure. Yeah. So we started with, we called them weekend warrior trips and we were just selling it to our friends here in, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where we'd go to DC and New York city. We'd do a couple volunteer projects along the way and it would be a three day trip. Uh, and then we decided, Hey, let's see if we could do something a little larger scale. Uh, we went out to Arizona and had, 12 people sign up. We were, uh, again, like running and gunning. We had never done this trip. We figured, Hey, what the hell we're gonna, we're gonna go all in and see if something happens. We had 12 people sign up. We did Zion national park, grand Canyon, Lake Powell and Antelope Canyon. And it was, it was probably after leaving that trip where I was like, Oh, okay. Like we're, 
we're a tour company. Like that's what, that's what have fun, do good is. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was, it was really cool to see it come full circle. Cause I felt like we, we nailed it. Like we nailed the timing. It wasn't a three and a half week trip. It was in and out. We left people feeling uh, on this high of traveling and, and giving back. And I thought I felt like super motivated after that first paid experience. Hmm. Could you say a bit more about that particularly? Like what, what attendees are getting out of these experiences and maybe to that trip particularly, like what did you notice? Uh, um, it was kind of coming off folks as, at the end of the trip versus when they began. Yeah, I mean, you, you become a family pretty quickly. You know, it's a, it's a five-day trip, four nights. Um, I just think the camaraderie between people at the beginning and the end, you know, it's, it, it was night and day. Like, we, we left hugging. We left, hey, what's your number? Like, we want to stay in touch. Uh, so that was really cool, um, being kind of the, the, the brains behind putting those people together and in the same room. Um, and then I, I think when you speak to the giving back portion of it, there's, you know, we don't, we don't describe how fun do good as this volunteer company. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very transparent. I mean, even, even in our name, you know, it's, it's have fun, do good. We do a couple volunteer projects along the way. We're just trying to, to challenge that traditional vacation mindset. And, and we're going to give you a couple volunteer projects and, and have you think differently about, you know, what a vacation could look like. So yeah, it was, uh, it, it was great. I mean, it, it was, I still keep in touch with a lot of those people from our first trip, uh, but looking back, I mean, we, again, we were running and gunning. Like I had never even been to those locations and we're <laughs> guiding people on it. And I mean, that's, that's the fun part, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. and, cool. and so then uh, you officially founded Have Fun, Do Good in 2016, right? 2016, yep. Okay. So about four-ish years later, and I know we're in a, a, a COVID-19 world right now. So things are a little bit different, but even still with maybe one of your uh, most recent trips that you can touch back to, what, what seems to be uh, uh, different and maybe more evolved from that original trip to how have fun, do good experience looks like now. Yeah, I think, I think our mindset has, has changed. Um, I don't think much has changed though, as, as to what our, our mission is. Um, you know, I, I'm passionate about this and I started it because I, I want to give people an opportunity to, to not only do something differently, but to, to think about things differently. Um, you know, take it back really far to that initial trip I took to uh, New Orleans post Katrina. I mean, I, I met so many friends on that trip that I still keep in touch with to this day. I mean, friends that were in my wedding. Um, so I always thought like, Hey, if you could, if you could provide something similar to, to someone, that's, that's what we want to do with have fun do good. So that mission hasn't changed. Um, I feel like we've, we know that we're a tour company now. I think maybe we were a little hesitant to, to come out of the gate after that first trip and say, Hey, we're a tour company, you know, cause you, you look at some of these larger outfits and like, there's some self self doubt that comes into play. Like, Oh, I don't, I don't know that we could be them, but we've just owned the fact that this is what we're offering. This is who we are. I, I don't have anything to prove to anyone. If our experience works for you and you think you can get some, something out of this sign up, it's, it's an amazing experience. And, and I, I guarantee you, if you come in with an open mind, you're going to leave feeling better about your, yourself and, and the people around you for sure. Hmm. And yeah, I mean, is it, is it something about the, the give back uh, component? You think that the experience itself or perhaps who that attracts onto the trips that, that perhaps separates a have fun, do good experience versus other more maybe traditional tour companies? I, yeah, I do. I think it's, it's not, it doesn't take up the whole experience. So that's why we're, we're very, cognizant to tell folks that we're not a volunteer company. If you want to do an immersive volunteer experience, you could certainly do that. And there are companies out there that do it, but uh, we're just trying to give people a taste and, and get them fired up about giving back. Uh, we, we feel like there's this negative connotation with volunteering and it takes up all this time. And, and, you know, it has to be done within this, this box of you have to do this, or you have to go to a soup kitchen. And we just want to show people that there are a lot of cool nonprofits out there. There are a lot of opportunities to give back. Um, you know, and it, it's really comes down to the ripple effect as well. People come on these trips. Our goal is that we introduce them to some of these unique nonprofits and then they go back to their hometowns and, and want to give back. So to get back to your initial question, uh, I do think the volunteer component is definitely attracts a certain person. 
and I, I feel like it attracts a, a good person. You know, we get really good people on our trip that are on the trip for, for the right reasons. You know, if you want to go to Costa Rica and, and uh, get hammered the whole time and go clubbing and, you know, there are tour companies that, that offer that type of experience. We don't, you know, we're all, all for going out, having drinks. And if you want to go to a dance club, fine. But uh, we, we feel like there's a little bit more purpose behind what we're doing with Have Fun Do Good than your, your typical outfit. Mm. And uh, so, I mean, maybe you, you've spoken to a lot of these uh, throughout, but I, I'm curious, just kind of holistically speaking, then, like, what, what are some of the overarching benefits that you see that you've gotten out of volunteer experiences and, and charity work of some kinds, and uh, as well, those of your, your attendees, like why, why does volunteering matter? Sure. I mean, that's, it really depends on the per person. Um, I think like the one word that comes to mind as you're asking that is, is perspective. Mm. Uh, I've been extremely fortunate to, to travel the world. Uh, I did a semester at sea when I was in college and I got to see so many unique places and, and give back. And, you know, I, one of the experiences that comes to mind is, uh, being at an orphanage that, that Mother Teresa started. And it's been one of the most heavy, impactful moments of my life. Um, you know, we were at this orphanage and we were just sitting around in, in a circle with, with these kids. And this one kid with, I don't know, he was probably a couple years old, had no arms, no legs, and he had the biggest smile on his face. Um, and I, I could like still like very much visualize that exact moment. And I just thought like, hey, this is, this is heavy. Um, I needed to walk out. It was so heavy. Yeah. So I had, I had walked out of that orphanage with j just a whole new perspective. I was young at the time, you know, I was 19 years old when, when I did that. Um, but you know, that's what volunteering is to me. It's, it's that perspective. It's that giving back, you know, you going in with, with the right intentions of, Hey, I, I want to give of myself. I want to give of my time. And, and it's not, it's not this big ask. It's not this big lift. It's just, just want to want to give it myself, and I think you come out of that whatever you're doing just just feeling better. I mean, it's scientifically proven that volunteering helps your your psyche, you know. So, um, but again, I mean, it really depends on on the person. But if you're going into it with the right reasons, I feel like um, you, you'll come out feeling better about yourself and the world around you if you just give give it your time. And that's really what we're trying to do with Have Fun Do Good is is to force people into something not force them into it, but, but give them an opportunity to, to give back on something they're already doing. And that's vacationing, which, which most people do, you know? Mm. I mean, and I, I think force, force may be a little bit aggressive, but I, I like pulling back on that. Um, yeah. cause it seems like what y'all are doing is, is, uh, reducing the, the friction or any sort of resistance to it, you know, increasing the accessibility, uh, of volunteering. Cause I think that is something that, keeps people from doing those experiences locally or pursuing them or seeking them out themselves just because some folks don't really know where to get started, you know, or think that it's, it can sometimes be a little bit of a cumbersome process, you know, cause you have to apply get background checks and all this kind of stuff in different instances. So it's nice that y'all are able to kind of remove those barriers. And like you said, bridge it on to something that people are very comfortable with and very excited about which is traveling and, and enjoying free time uh, that way. Right. Um, and so I'm, I'm interested, you know, what, what has you, and I know there is this context, the looming context of how the world is right now in this immediate moment, but maybe putting that to the side, what has you most excited or enthusiastic about this trajectory of have fun, do good looking forward? Yeah. So, uh, 2020 sucks, you know, I'll just, I'll just put that, <laughs> put that out there. Um, leading up to, you know, pre COVID, uh, we were rocking and rolling. We, we started a concept, uh, a couple years ago called drink beer, do good, where we partner up with breweries across the country and, uh, get make sandwiches for local homeless shelters. Uh, we had 25 events on the calendar that we had to postpone because of coronavirus, which sucks, but, we feel really good about that when, when we're back up and, and, and rocking here with, with events and, and people feeling more comfortable about going out. Um, and then this travel as a whole, uh, you know, we launched six new locations for 2020, uh, which, which will likely be postponed to 2021, but uh, we're staying positive and, and we feel really good about where we're going as a company and, and being able to offer even more you know, unique experiences for people to give back. Mm. And 
uh, you know, I know the world hitting the wall that it did uh, for a business of your kind. I'm still interested because the expansion to so many different experiences, you know, obviously leads leads people to assume that there's been some great growth. So beforehand, you know, in the the three years previous, what well, what do you think like led to the growth of Have Fun Do Good? You know, maybe both uh, um, tactically and strategically. Like, what how how do you I get to a point where you're prepared to expand, you know, to so many different offerings uh, for folks. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been uh, it's been a slow grind. I, I I'd be lying to you if I, I said it wasn't. Uh, we really focused on from the start and in, in building a brand that was was truly us. Uh, you know, getting the trademark for Have Fun Do Good that was a big hurdle to cross. Uh, we feel like our our name is is in itself. Uh, you know, a reflection of, of who we are. Uh, so our whole team, like we, we buy into the, the, the notion of have fun, do good. And uh, that, that means a lot to us, you know, tactically, as far as building the business, it's just been being transparent and open about who we are, what we're offering and, and not feeling pressure to, to be anything outside of that. I feel like a lot of brands try to emulate something that they're not, and then they end up failing. I feel like, wow, it's been slow. It's been a good path. And we feel like, uh, you know, as, as the future is concerned, once we get out of this, this coronavirus uh, law, uh, that the things are, are going to be, you know, where they were going into 2020, for sure. Hmm. And, and has there been any sort of uh, intention, or maybe it's just sorted itself out over time, um, but any sort of attention, intention to how you've been able to articulate, you know, so authentically, like what Have Fun Do Good is, like what kind of brand you want to be and, and what you are? Um. Not necessarily. I mean, it's, it's been, uh, it's been kind of simple on, on our end, you know, we've just stuck to the simplicity of it and, and not, again, not trying to be anything we're not. Uh, I think maybe some of the messaging has changed and, uh, you know, telling people that we're not a volunteer company, because uh, we have had some people email us about that. And, you know, I, I just think that, uh, again, coming back to, Hey, we're a tour company. We offer boutique travel experiences that incorporate volunteerism. Uh, if this is, if you want to do something unique with your, your vacation, give us a try, you know, and, uh, the reviews kind of speak for themselves. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a simple process. It's just, uh, as you know, you know, being a business owner, it, it, it takes a while to gain some traction and, and get your name out there. So that's been the big focus over the last few years is, is brand awareness and, uh, getting more people familiar with the brand. Hmm. And so what, what, what do you feel like is your role, particularly as the, the CEO of Have Fun, Do Good uh, on the day to day, month to month? Like, where do you feel like you're best fit? Maybe thinking about what a CEO should do slash also where your strengths are. Sure. I mean, we're very much in a position where it's, it's all hands on deck. Uh, definitely a, a higher level thinker. I'm, I'm an idea guy. Um, but, but also, you know, the one, the one pull on the levers. So we have a really solid team of of creative folks. We just brought on two new interns who uh, have been incredible so far. Um, but yeah, I think just, just keeping people positive, staying in line with, with what our mission and, and values are. Uh, but, but me personally, I'm, I'm definitely the, the big picture guy. Um, but I, I get, I get my hands dirty. I'm, I'm definitely not afraid to, to get in there and, uh, you know, <laughs> whether it's the website, social media, whatever it may be, uh, you know, I'm, get in the weeds with that just whatever whatever's needed at a particular whatever it moment. takes man yeah <laughs> um well adam I, I do really appreciate the time i do have some rapid fire questions for you before we we wrap up here is right if i ask a few yeah go for it all right well let's start first and foremost with uh are there any other particular social impact brands or businesses or even nonprofit organizations that have inspired you uh, as of late that you'd like to get a plug to uh not necessarily as of late. I mean, uh, like Tom's came to mind when you said like inspire me. I mean, Tom's, you know, everyone knows Tom's, but I think what, what they did, you know, kind of the first to come to market with the one for one model has been uh, extremely impressive. Uh, Pencils of Promise is another brand I followed closely. Um, Charity Water, obviously, like their impact in the space has been uh, incredible. And then um, I, I would say, you know, most recently, uh, our friend Grant Trahant with uh, Cause Artists, mm. I think with, with what he's doing in the space and featuring different social impact companies, uh, big, big kudos to him. We've been friends for a while and uh, what he's been able to build is, is really impressive. Mm. 
And uh, perhaps a, a book or a movie documentary recommendation that uh, something you always come back to or, or something you'd like to recommend? I read Shoe Dog recently, mm. uh, the story of Phil Knight. I thought that was uh, really inspiring, just, just coming from an entrepreneurial background. Um, I just watched the Last Dance documentary. I thought that was, <laughs> <laughs> that was cool as well to see, you know, someone like Michael Jordan and, and his competitiveness and, uh, you know, finding parallels, um, you know, in that with, with business. But uh, yeah, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, I'd say uh, Shoe Dog is, is definitely worth checking out if you're, if you're looking to get inspired. And uh, are there any particular daily habits, morning routines that you feel like you absolutely have to stick to? Yeah, exercise every every single day. I mean, that really keeps me keeps me centered, if you will. Uh, it's the one thing I, I can't not do. Uh, I feel like if I'm if I don't exercise, whether it's run, bike, lift, whatever, I just I, I feel like my day is just not not as productive as it could be. Mm. And uh, what what are kind of the the forms of exercise that you're leaning on right now? Yeah, I uh, I do a ton of of running and cycling. I, I was training for a triathlon prior to COVID hitting and then, you know, most, most events have been canceled. So training has, has shifted slightly, getting more uh, back into some strength training stuff, but a lot of, a lot of running and biking. Excellent. And then uh, lastly, Adam, are there any sort of parting asks for our audience here? Any kind of uh, uh, requests or recommendations? Yeah, I would say check us out. Uh, we're at havefundogood.co. Uh, we do a lot of stuff on Instagram. We're at havefundogood. Um, reach out to us. You know, if, if you have ideas or you just want to, you know, shoot the breeze. Uh, it's always interesting talking to other motivated people. Uh, I reached out to a lot of folks when I was starting my, my first few businesses. So, uh, you know, if people have questions or anything, reach out to me personally. I'm at adam at havefundogood.co. Perfect. All right, Adam. Thanks so much for taking the time and we'll link everything up at growensemble.com. Sounds great. I appreciate it.